Lori, you really wanted to see what Andy Sullivan could bring, how she could be that pivot player for this team and really control the midfield. Now she was paired up with Lindsay Horan and Rose Lavelle, two players that also have a lot of experience in the midfield for their country. But from Andy Sullivan and that midfield unit, what did you see from them? Yeah, well, this is my favorite, I think, out of all of the conversations right now <laughs> around this team. This is my favorite one because I think this position is the most wide open, and it's why we've talked about it. And, you know, knowing how Andy Sullivan plays and, and what she's capable of, I thought it was a good performance. I think it was a, mm -hmm. a really good goal. Um, obviously, she can also be a threat on set pieces, whether it's off the initial ball or just, um, you know, rerouting her run and, and, and framing the goal like she did off the Alana Cook assist. Um, however, I still, you know, maybe this is me being naive and um, really kind of like envisioning how I would like to see some of the play from the U.S., but I'm still wanting to see somebody that really kind of wants to take this, the game and the team um, in their own hands in that position in terms of like, all right, get the ball off the, um, you know, the back line turn, just link play, whether it's like shorter passes, get it back, switch the point, because I still feel like there's other ways um, that this U S can attack, especially mm -hmm. when we see different opponents throw at them. So I thought it was a, um, a really solid performance by Andy. And I still think that there is another level um, you know, one thing that I think is interesting, and, and we mentioned it last week um, also, is not necessarily changing the formation, because I don't really see Vlatko doing that, um, at least right now. Um, but it was mentioned with Ali and JP on the broadcast um, right. about, you know, maybe playing with two holding sixes. Um You know, I think that's interesting. I, I, I don't necessarily, I think that you can do that now right with the players it just it requires a little bit of nuance and a shifting of players roles so you know i, I was thinking about it in terms of who, okay yeah, who would, would you, you want to see in well that pit because pit. the two players that we think in that position right now are jalen howell and um andy sullivan and the only reason i don't necessarily know if i would play them together However, yeah. the only reason why I would is because I personally think that Andy is more of a true number eight, a box to box in between, because she has a, a lot of attacking abilities and a final pass um, that is not showcased a ton. Um, right. We see it some, but not all the time with the Washington Spirit. And that's just her role, right? It's just a little bit of a different role. They utilize her and need her. Um, her positional and expertise in different ways. Um, however, we have seen her join the attack and there's a final pass that she has. She has the ability to shoot from distance. Um, so I'm not sure I'd play those two, but I would, I mean, listen, in a perfect world, I would love to see Sam Mewis. And I said it before about like a 2019 yeah. World Cup Sam Mewis. Yes, I understand that there's like a different love, but you know, she's had some injuries and stuff, but she did play that number eight and it would just require right. her to drop back and have a uh, more specific defensive responsibility next to like, let's say an Andy, um, because I do think Andy is further along than Jalen Howell right now. Um, that's not taking away from, Howell's abilities. I think they're very different players. And um, I think Jalen Howell is still getting used to, I mean, she's a rookie, right? Rookie in the right, league, yeah. um, minimal caps with the national team. And to play in that lone role is a big responsibility. So that's why we're having the conversation, right? Because Julie Ertz occupied it in a way that you don't see a lot of players occupy it, right? She was going to, you know, I didn't, let's just say, I didn't want to go against her. I would like, you're going like, to take my legs. So no, thank you. However, Andy Sullivan brings something different than Julie Ertz, but that does require some different positional play and understanding um, amongst other, other players. And exactly. I know it does. On. Yeah. Go yeah. Ahead. No, oh, Lori, continue. Go I was going to say, because I, you know, I think about you. this a lot when we are missed the when we miss the number six a lot, right? Which was mm -hmm. against Sweden in the Olympics, and Lindsay Horan had to play in that position, and um, Aslani from Sweden did a really good job. So then, wh who are you playing? Because we know that Rose is like a, one of the best dribblers out of the midfield in the world, but that looks like do you play her in a game of that? when Sweden set up that way, because you need somebody else that's going to drop back and help set play, help give cover to the back line. So I don't necessarily think it's a difference in the way that you set up um, 
but I think it does require some different specific roles for players. I should say it does and not having Sam Lewis in the midfield and, and not being called into this camp was well, called in initially, but dealing with some injuries. So not being present for this camp and these matches, it changes the way the midfield looks. And now that black Lewandowski is having Katarina Macario playing higher in that front line, which I think she should stay there. She does a tremendous job mm-hmm. in that front line, but it changes things in the midfield when we look at, at three that he has and, and whether it's a pivot, a double pivot with two sixes in the back. We've Mm -hmm. seen Lindsay Horan play that role. I like her much higher up the field. She's not as effective when she's playing that six role. as You just mentioned versus Sweden. It was lacking. There was a big gaping hole there when Mm -hmm. she was playing that role. But I agree. I don't think Andy Sullivan has taken that position and said, it's mine. No one take it from me. Like a little Mm -hmm. toddler with a toy. That's what I want her to do. Solidify herself so well in that role that If when Julie Ertz decides she wants to come back um, after her pregnancy, that it's a battle between those two. Because right now, if Julie Ertz were to come back for the June camp, it would be Julie Ertz's role. Just, of course, Mm -hmm. depending on her health and her status and even if she wants to come back. But Andy Sullivan hasn't necessarily taken ownership of that six role. When mm-hmm. you look at uh, Jalen Howe get, got the second half. So Andy Sullivan and Howe split in that first game, 45 minutes each apiece. Uh, both actually scored a goal in this match. Jalen Howe's first senior team goal. So that was really exciting for her. You could just see the joy on her face. But another <laughs> player that wasn't called into this, uh, that actually TJ Trex, who's joining our chat again this time, mentioned Morgan Gattrall, a player that, yeah doesn't necessarily play that defensive role as well. She does push a little bit higher, but could we see potentially her being called back in? Even looking at the June camps, of course, this is a long ways away. But when you focus in on that midfield unit and and the trio in that middle of the field for the United States, and specifically looking at the sixth role, Andy Sullivan, Morgan Gattrall, in that pivot Mm -hmm. position, like that could be different. Could we see, I know you mentioned Black Bananowski, most likely not switchins but three in the back dropping Andy Sullivan even a little deeper or, or even Jalen Howell trying to be that three center back then allowing the outside backs to get forward so much more more of a three five in that back line and midfield mm-hmm. are these possible options have you thought about this at all I know that it's most likely unlikely but it's fun to chat about <laughs> uh yeah I listen I think that the beauty of um the league continuing to grow and continuing to evolve is that um, somebody like Morgan Gautreaux's career is revitalized, right? We saw her mm-hmm. an important role in the 2015 World Cup and then kind of fall off the scene and get herself healthy again. I mean, battling through a little bit the early stages of this of this Challenge Cup, but now back. And I think that's one of the reasons why she wasn't called in. I think if she was playing consistently, um, right. she has she has been doing really well for Chicago. And one of the reasons why I felt like they made it to the final, right, of last year's um, mm-hmm the NWSL championship. Um, you know, I, I, it all comes down to performances. So all of these players have the ability, Morgan Gattrall, for, um, for instance, has the experience. It just depends on how you're performing, staying healthy. And I think a lot of that will be, um, some of those decisions will be made for Blacko, right? Because the games in the challenge, yeah. or excuse me, in the NWSL are challenging, and we've already seen a few players um, who are important to this team out. Lynn Williams, Sam Mewis right now. Um, so, you know, and the countless other ones here in the Davidson and all the other players, that, veterans that we're seeing come back. But yes, I think that it is wide open, right, for a lot of these positions in some ways um, it's just going to be about performance and consistency with the club, especially with this U S team. And I think I mentioned it last time, at least because what is interesting mm-hmm. about this and why we're able to have these conversations is because with how pay is being structured, structured, structured now um, and in not overseeing with us soccer and, you know, gone really are the days where you go in like, what seemed like three months before like a world cup. Right. So the way that to black go to, um, to see how these t- players are performing is through their club. You know, it's just, you don't have as much time anymore. And it's typical with like, what's been the deal around the world on both the men's and women's side. So, um, you have to be able to play with whoever you have to be able to adapt to the different systems, but mostly perform, which is yeah, a lot. 
I mean, when it comes it, down to it, that's what you get paid for, but it is <laughs> to be consistent for 11 months. It's, <laughs> it's, it's part of your job. That's what you're getting yeah. paid for. But seeing the rotation in the NWSL too, the, the 2021 off season before this 2022 challenge mm-hmm. cup started, there was so much player movement with I think Black and Anoski was a little bit excited about because it tests how Christy Mewis is now going to play at Gotham, not at Houston anymore, around players that she is really comfortable with, but now going to Gotham and playing with a new rotation of players, a different style of play in that midfield. Um, I want to stick with this midfield unit a little bit more because we saw player rotation throughout this match. Um, of course, Jalen Howell coming in at the midfield. Also, Christy Mewis checking in for Lindsay Horan that then stayed on with Rose Lavelle. Um, these different player rotations is definitely something I wanted to see. Ultimately, Ashley Sanchez then does come on for Rose Lavelle. But throughout this 90 minutes, there was different player rotation, but the midfield unit being mm-hmm. substituted first in this match. Um, yeah. And having Hal and Mewis coming in, was that what you were expecting to see at the 45 minute at the halftime mark with those rotations starting in the midfield? Well, I have to admit that I was a little bit surprised that um, Howell did come in at the 45th minute for Andy. I mm-hmm. just expected a little bit, at least maybe the 60 minute mark, but I think that proves and speaks to exactly what we're talking about, that position being wide open. And then I do believe, and this hasn't been confirmed, it's just my own um, opinion, but, or thoughts. We love um, it. <laughs> but I think that Lindsay Horan is probably uh, battling still a little bit of a knee injury. We've seen that yeah. uh, her, it wrapped, right? And so um, I think it was minutes, mi- managing of minutes for Lindsay Horan um, and hoping that they'll get time for her in this next game as well. Um, so I think that was the reason behind that. Um, However, I mean, even though the six position doesn't seem like there's like a ton of depth right there or it's still wide open, I mean, when you look at the attacking midfield positions, like, take your pick. Like, I mean, I was hoping last, you know, for this first game, it was the Haran, Sullivan, and Sanchez combination. Um, And then for the second game, I was, I'm still hoping that Sullivan will get the start because I would like to see her in these Mm -hmm. back-to-back games. And then I had Mewis and Lavelle. But since we did see Lavelle, um, I would be curious now to see, I would swap maybe Rose in for Sanchez and get Sanchez some more minutes from the beginning. And then that, because, you know, a lot of times with Christy Mewis, one of the reasons why she got herself back, listen, Christy Mewis used to come in with national team camps when I was playing, like she was like, I want to say 13. She wasn't, but you know, she might as well. Have been. <laughs> um, and um, yourself, Lori, you are not that old. You're not yeah. that far. Removed. I mean, but the point is, Christy Mewis, play, been, they think I'm old. <laughs> Christy Mewis has been in these camps for, forever yeah. for a long yeah. time and then, and then she wasn't there was a five-year hiatus where she wasn't called in dealing with injury kind of getting back into form mm-hmm. exactly and the reason why she's back in is because she was dominant with houston right she was such an impact mm-hmm. player for them and i th- personally think christy Mewis is best in more of that eight role as well i mean she can drop deep and play balls over the top we saw a few of those in this game with uzbekistan and she did it quite a bit in the midfield for Houston dash when she was playing um, at her best. Now I think, you know, switching teams with Gotham and, and her coming through a few different injuries early on too, in the challenge cup, just working her way back into more consistent playing time. Can she continue to produce that way? But I have her in that starting lineup tomorrow along with Sanchez and Sullivan, because I do think she can be that two way player that we've talked about, which Mm -hmm. um, could drop a little bit deeper and, um, sit next to not necessarily sit next to Sullivan, but, you know, play off of her and play some um, different types of balls from a deeper position that then allows Sanchez to have more of that little combination play with Macario and them being a little bit more yes. interchange. So I, that's what I would like to see. I think that's when I, when I think about balance in the midfield, that's, I also, um, I think those three would be interesting. So yeah, um, I agree. I agree. I want to see Sanchez in there 
with Rose too. I don't, I want to see what that can provide mm -hmm. and, and what yeah. that can do. Um, I like that I shout. Mean, I think that's interesting. I haven't really yeah. thought about that. Um, but goodness, like that's There's the last thing you want, least people running at that, <laughs> the two of them running at the back line. <laughs> and that's the last thing that opponents would want. I think it would expose the midfield a lot. So, but against mm -hmm. a team like Uzbekistan, that isn't causing that much of a threat in the midfield. That's uh, they didn't dominate the midfield against the United States. That could be pretty fun, very yeah. dangerous. But then you also have to have that conversation with the front line between, it, say it is Smith, Pugh, and Macario again up front, how they're going to react when you have Lavelle and Sanchez just streaking down and it's really five in that front line. Um, we yeah. might almost lose midfield in that sense. Yes. Yeah. And it also depends on, too, I think, yes, great point about how the opponent is set up. And then also, because that's what makes Rose so special, right? Is where she's right. able to pick up the ball and start running at the opposition. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious. Um, yeah, I like that. I like that combination a lot. And it also just depends on um, how you structure the defense behind so that, you know, if you're a pressing team like the United States and the ball is turned over, then who's stepping in? Is that a Kelly O'Hare? Is that Emily oh. Fox sitting in it? You know, so there's so many exactly. ways that you can solve that. Um, and it just depends on what parts of the um, field that you want to give away um, defensively, if that is the case and it does turn over and you're exposed in some, it just depends. So um, exactly, but, exactly. Yikes. And Emily Grace, Emily Grace Resser and, and Christopher Meister, they're calling us out. They're saying that that Sanchez Rose moving up the, the central channel would be terrifying. Yes. How, <laughs> yeah. How I would fall. If I was a defender, I would just lay down and like hope that yeah. something would be happen. Like, okay, fine. You win. You win.